Hi, this is PD at Bergzerg Arcade at bergzergarcade.com and this is tutorial 153. Now we're just going to continue on from where we left off in our last tutorial. So let's just go ahead and open up Unity. And we had just made our game object for our game master and we attached three scripts to it. Now you might have noticed in the end of the last one, I accidentally had two game masters attached to it. Uh, we only need one and we only want one. So just make sure that if you do have two, I just come up, click the a little wheel here, the cog, and just hit remove component. So I'm going to turn some of these off and we're just going to work on these one at a time. So I'm going to uncheck game master and target mob and let's just work on the mob generator for now. Now if you notice exposed it has mob prefabs and spawn points. Uh, we're going to work with the spawn point first. So let's learn how to create a spawn point prefab. So I'm going to come down to prefabs. I'm going to create a prefab. Actually let's create a folder first. Let's keep them separate. And I'm going to call this Game Objects. Well, I'll just pick a different name because Game Objects in Unity, you might tend to think of well, a Game Object in Unity. Uh, let's just call these Objects. So we're going to put things in here such as Spawn Points and possibly uh, other objects that go into your game. Maybe uh, some sort of Bind Stone or Life Stone, something that you attach to. So when you die, this is where you reappear. Uh, these are the type of things we're going to want to put in here. So I'm going to right click. And we'll just create a prefab. And I'm going to call it spawn point. And I've actually created a script for spawn points. So let's go down into our script folder. And we'll load that one up and take a look at it. Now right now all it does is add a gizmo to the scene. Uh, we will be expanding on its functionality a little bit later on. But for now all we really want is just to have it in the scene. And let's just look for it. Uh, so we have it right here. So let's double click it. And this is going to open up Mono Develop. I didn't have it open ahead of time. So it's going to take a little bit. Uh, since we have longer videos, I'll just leave it in. And if you notice, I didn't see it right away. So I just used the search function to find it. It's very handy to learn how to use this. Especially once your projects start to get much larger. So it opened and closed. So I'll just reopen it. And here we go. I'm also going to add this to my component menu. And uh, let me just take a quick look in my component menu and decide where it would be best. Uh, it's not going to be part of the day night cycle. Uh, I don't really want to start making a whole lot of these extra sub menus. Uh, but I'm going to make one called Objects, and uh, well, yeah, let's go ahead and actually start making our own root folder. So I'm going to add component, and I'm going to put in hack, and of course I forgot those quotes. Hack and slash tutorial, and I'm going to just say Objects because that's what we called it in our prefabs folder and I'm gonna call it spawn point and we really should add the rest of this hack to this hierarchy as well uh, I'll go back and do that a little bit later on I'll probably if you've purchased description you're downloading them chances are you'll already have it uh, added there by the time you download it. but let's just go back into unity and we'll take a look and there we go, hack and slash tutorial, objects, spawn point. So I'm actually going to move the rest of my scripts there. Uh, I'm going to do it outside of the tutorial. You shouldn't really need to see me go through and do them all. Uh, just a quick primer just to show you how to do it. Uh, before we were just doing... Whoops, I didn't mean to undo. Let me just quickly redo. Before we were just putting one level of sub submenus in there. So we'd have it like this here. All we're going to do is just add that. Oops, I did it wrong. Got to do it beforehand. All we're going to do is add this hack and slash, and then well, a forward slash in front of it. And this way here, we can actually put all of our components in one easy menu. I think that might be a little bit easier because it looks like we're actually going to have quite a few components. And our dynamic cycle will be there. 
Our player is going to be there. Our mob's going to be there. We'll have our own camera control in there. And our managers are going to be So, yeah, we're going to actually have quite a few components that we're going to add to it. But that's done. So let's go ahead and create an empty game object over here. And it's right where my player is. I'm just going to move it a bit. And I'm going to attach this script to it. Actually, I'm going to rename it first. Spawn point. And of course, you know, since the script is here, we could just drag it. But we did go ahead and make that nice little drop down menu. So we might as well use it. And there we go. We got this big sphere. Now, I went over briefly on how to change, you know, which, what's here, at least base, the basics of making gizmos. Uh, if you search the tutorials, it should be titled, you know, creating gizmos or you know, something along the line of gizmos. So if you want to learn how to play with the gizmos, make sure you look that up. And I'm actually going to move this out quite a bit more. Because I really don't want it too close to my player. And I'm also going to take it and drag it onto my prefab that I've made. There we go. I'm going to clear that out. I want to close up my scripts. And you notice my spawn point is filled in. It's blue. And if I click off the spawn point over here, it's blue as well, meaning that it's attached to a prefab. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and copy this a few more times. So I've made three prefabs. I'm just going to spread them out a little bit. And we'll put this one, oh, let's put it up a little bit more. There we go. And of course, you can actually go ahead and rename these. And I am just to make them a little bit more uh, distinguishable in game, or at least while we're working with them. Now I'm going to come up to my game manager, and we're working with the mob generator. So I'm going to come over to the size here for our spawn points. I'm going to put three, and I'm just going to drag these on. It really doesn't matter what order you drag them on. Uh, I'm just going to do them in order that I have them numbered. And we also want a mob prefab. So I'm going to close down my objects folder here, open up my mobs. Now I've only made one mob prefab. Uh, I guess I could go ahead and make another one. We might as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and well, I'll grab that little zombie guy. So characters. I believe it was three. Yep. I'm just going to drag him onto my scene. I want to zoom in. Uh, actually, I'm going to do a little bit of customization on this guy as far as you know what items are showing. So I'm going to change his name first off. And I'm just going to call him uh, I don't know, Zombie Mage. He's going to be a mage. And I'm just actually going to click on the items here. And if we look at the item that I have clicked, uh, I've got him clicked. Let's get the shield first. I'm just going to disable it. He doesn't need guns. So we'll see gun 2. I'll disable that as well. Uh, this is his rifle. <laughs> My zombie doesn't need a rifle. This looks like gun 1. So we'll disable that. And he's got a wand and sword here. I'm just going to try to click the sword. I didn't, but that's fine. Uh, we can actually find it in the hierarchy or just click one of those. There we go. We've got the wand and sword here, which is with gun 1 and rifle. So I'll disable the sword. And I'm going to leave that little hat. So there we go. Uh, I do not have any animations on them. Now I have them set to cast and receive shadows. In my game, I'm not uh, having my mobs cast and receive shadows. Uh, so I'm actually going to uncheck these right now. So anytime it makes this prefab, it automatically does not have uh, the shadows attached to it. And actually what I've done is done it to the actual sword. Uh, let's go down and click the actual zombie and let's shrink these down there we go if we click the character down here we can get all of the character mesh now anything that's showing that has its own mesh you'll want to make sure to go and get those as well so I'll quickly save that uh, we're going to need scripts attached to them so I'll shrink everything down again I'm going to attach to my mob scripts to them it says I'm losing the prefab, that's fine. Uh, and I'm just going to start off with my character controller. So I want to move it up. A little bit more. And uh, definitely skinnier. So we'll go to the radius. Not quite that skinny. I'm up there. That's good enough to start working with. And I'll do the sphere collider. We'll move that up. I generally move it to about the pivot point, or not necessarily the pivot point, but the center of the mob. 
maybe a little bit higher. And I don't know, I'll give them this much radius. Uh, I'm gonna want more radius. Well, the zombies are dumb. Sorry, sorry, any zombies listening out there. I'll just give it a four for a default radius. So that's his perception zone. And it is triggered. And remember, in our script, it actually checks to make sure that the sphere collider uh, is checked. And if it isn't, it checks it for you automatically. But if you remember, click it. Doesn't hurt. 